Hello and welcome to Crochet My Way. Today we're going to learn how to make surface slip stitches. Now I have here on my workspace three squares that I've made as a tester once upon a time for Vanessa Smith from Hooked on Sunshine. I believe this is the Aurora Square if our memory serves and I think the ones below are the Delilah Square. Actually this one was made by my bestie. Anyway, what you're looking at is surface slip stitching in these contrast colours. There's the blue one there, the variegated one here, and all these brown sections here, these round lines and this one here, are all surface slip stitching and they're put on after the row is made or the round is made. So why are they there and what are they used for? They're used for a number of reasons. This is beautiful. This just gives incredible highlights made on top of the crochet work. Sometimes they can be used to pull a shape in to keep it stable in the center and but most of the time it is very much decorative, okay? So oftentimes we hear people complaining about doing the surface slip stitch, they're not sure how it happens, how it works. The instructions are usually pretty clear, but I'll show you how to make them and I'll show you the difference between the working them around a post and working them under the top loops and I will also show you a method for doing them when it's too late when you've progressed so far forward that it's really awkward to do them the normal way and you have to work them completely from the top so let's get some some sample squares I've got two here and let's practice So normally what happens is you reach a point in the pattern and it tells you that to make surface slip stitches and each designer will have their own method and will probably have a description in the stitch descriptions for you. Now I do it slightly differently. Most designers might start with a knot at the back of their work but I don't. So and I'll show you how to do it without tying a knot to begin and how to finish off by tying the knot at the end. Let's, we'll start that in a moment. But first let's talk about it. So surface slip stitching can be put anywhere on a piece and it can be worked across any stitch. So normally you might be told to work around the post of a stitch, which is that, and work your surface slip stitches. Sometimes you are told to work under the top loops. The top loops are here. You See how there's this little thread under there? That's the third loop. And we need to get in between if you're working under the top loops but if you're working around the post you need to go under the third loop so that it is sitting above your stitch it's a slight difference and it will change slightly the look we'll do them both don't worry but that's what you need to check first when you're working a pattern where does it tell you to put your surface slip stitches and which round and so what you have to do is make sure you get to the right round first so this is my round two so the, I'm, I've finished round three and my pattern might have said surface slip stitch around the post of round two. So I have to locate row two, there it is right there. Then I have to figure out where my post is. There are the third loops are underneath right there. I need to get under them around the post. If it says in round two into the top loops, then I need to go above that third loop which is sitting right there and go above it and then above the next one and work my slip stitch. Alright, that's enough chat, let's start. So to do it my way, here's what I do. Grab yourself a nice long tail, leave it long, alright? Then get into a stitch. Now we always recommend starting away from a corner, or at least I suggest you start away from the corner. Don't start in the corner because it's really hard to finish off in a corner. Start away from the corner, one, two or five, wherever. I'm just going to randomly poke in there. Grab your loop and pull it through. And notice I have left a considerable tail here and you'll see why later. Now this is going to be the very first stitch and it's going to be very loose and I want you not to worry about that. Now I'm going under, I'm going around the post stitch, so I'm going under that third loop, so under the top loops. Now, take the slack out of it, go into the next stitch and pull up your loop, into the next space I should say, not stitch, and pull it through that first loop. Now I know it's loose, do not worry about that, just trust me, you have to trust me. Okay, leave that tail there. Okay, so now we've got our first slip stitch done, you can see it right there. So now we just start going around. 
we go to the next space around the posts pull up a loop and pull it through now the other things you have to know is you must be loose do not tighten up if you're finding that your stitches are too tight you need to go up a hook size okay I'm using a worsted weight yarn here and I've got a four and a half millimeter hook but I will also very deliberately pull it, be pulling my loops quite loose okay so now my next stitch is going to go into that corner space it's no different put your hook in pull up your loop and pull it through very loosely now you do not need to do extra stitches into these corners what you do need to do though is be a little bit loose just pull it up a bit looser and come straight over in between the posts of the next stitch pull up a loop pull it through and immediately your slip stitch will just curve around that corner as long as you're nice and loose and then you just continue under those top loops so around the post pull up a loop and pull it through again down and up pull it through always making sure that your tension is comfortably loose and give it a little stretch test I'm always a big advocate for the stretch test so make sure there is enough room for the work to have some good natural stretch in it down again pull up a loop pull it through down up pull it through back into the next corner again nice and loose just rotate a little bit and come over to the next post down and up and pull it through keep going now that was a really loose loop there I can always cinch it a little bit if I need to All right? and just keep going so that's what it looks like. like that. So I'll just come all the way around and I'll show you how to finish off and make a join that will be completely invisible and no one will ever know where you started your surface slip stitching. Back in a minute. So I've finished my round but I have stopped just shy of the last post. Do not go around the last one. Leave it there. And what I want you to do is cut your yarn, trust me, nice long tail, again very long tail, just especially when you're starting to learn a new skill, give yourself plenty of space because you need to make sure you've got enough. Later when you're more experienced you can cut them shorter. Cut your tail and pull it out. Now it's a scary thing to do but you just have to believe. Okay, now I just need a needle, get yourself a little darning needle thread your yarn. Now I'm going to show you how to finish off and no one will ever know where you started. So there's my last stitch, here's my tail. Here's my first stitch, so I'm just actually holding that back loop just to keep it you know cinched. I don't want to pull it tight, I just want to hang on to it so it doesn't come away from me. All I want to do now, it's a bit like a needle join, if you've watched the needle join it's exactly the same. I want to go under those two loops of that very first stitch just gently don't catch anything go straight under the loops and pull your yarn through like that don't pull it tight you have to have the same look all the way around and then we're going to come back to this same loop and just stab it down through into the back like that and hey presto you have a perfect finish so that once you tie off and I'll show you how to do that now no one will ever know where your surface slip stitches started and where they ended so now I come round to the back and this is what I do now watch very carefully it's called a square knot so get your two ends and go first maybe pick a side it doesn't matter which first one goes over and under first knot like this and pull it down just until it's sitting snugly on the top of the work. Do not over tighten it. See, I have not tightened anything yet. So that was the over and under. Now come back around and do the other one over and under. Over and under. This is called the square knot. You see why? It's looking like a square there. Now when I pull this second knot tight, it will cinch itself down on top of the first one without pulling the work and that is so important. 
and you just slowly slowly when you're new at this do it very slowly cinch 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 and boom that is as tight as it will go and it has not pulled anything and that is as secure a knot as you will ever get it can't pull anything it's perfect so now once I cut off my ends I can flip this around a million times and you will not be able to tell me where I started and where I finished can you and then all I do is I just work my tails away and I try to go in and back and bit a few times around the very same color so that it doesn't show too much when it's reversed or when people are using it so you just wrap it around here and try and stab your threads when you're going backwards and forwards so they will really really set okay so that's surface slip stitching around the actual post of the stitch all right now let me grab another square and we'll do the same thing and we'll go into the top loops this time so instead of down around here we're going to go in there and back out of there all right so let me get, get myself set up and i'll be right back Okay, here I have another square and we're going to do the same start, nice long tail and we're going to pick it up from the back but first we have to find our position so we're not going around the post this time we are going under the top loops so the top loops are right where your, the stitches in the next round go so there they are right there that stitch is in the top loops and there underneath is the third loop right there okay so we need to go in between right there grab your yarn like before just pull it through and leave it loose it doesn't matter okay just leave it loose hold the tail with your hands just hold on to it it doesn't matter and then we're going to go from there to the next set of top loops which are right there in there stab in pull up your loop and pull it through that's your first slip stitch made and your tail can just sit wherever it is there it is sit loosely okay and that's all we're going to do now we're going to stay under those top loops pull through make a slip stitch under the top loops pull through and slip stitch and then we hit the corner we're going to just go straight into the corner it does not matter and then we come back now here we've got top loops there and there so you can use the first one like that that gives you another extra little stitch in that corner and then we'll just continue on under those top loops so you can each time you can see the third loop underneath top loop nice and loose and just keep working your way around nice and loose okay because you don't want it sitting tight because when the blanket's stretched whoops the surface slip stitches also must stretch otherwise it's going to pucker into the corner again turn around back into that first set of top loops and then we'll stop and have a look in a minute I think I split my yarn I will do that bit there. like that just keep going nice and easy I'm not holding hardly any tension on my yarn at all it must come through freely but as I said if it's tightening up get yourself a bigger hook but if you're working a pattern you then have to remember and usually the pattern will remind you to drop back down to your normal hook size after your surface slip stitches okay so let me just stop and show you now so when I pull my square everything is nice and loose All right. so the difference what's the difference you may not be able to notice a lot of difference but if you've done your stitch work correctly you'll see how it's a little bit sitting a bit higher here it's sitting above the full stitch whereas this one is actually covering part of the full stitch so it's really to do with a little bit of where that decorative loop needs to be and that's up to the designer to tell you you do get a bit more into the corners with the the top loops one you get a second stitch in there and it probably sits a bit a bit squarer this one might sit a little bit rounder it's really up to the designer and what their intentions are 
sometimes it's to do with the play of the colours that they're using as well. So again we just come back around, I'll just finish and I'll redo the join again for you. So here, here I am, finished again, I've cut my yarn, I've left the last crossover, pull my yarn out, thread it again, take hold of this back loop just to keep it in place and do a needle join. Come under the top loops, not too tight, to the same size as all your other loops if possible, where possible, you might have to pull it in or pull it out, and then just stab down through the middle to the back. And another flawless finish. Turn it over and make your knot. Over and under from the left for me, first time. Just cinch it down snug, not too tight, and then over another from the under from the right for the second one. The other way you <laughs> come down, cinch, 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 nice and tight. No matter how tight I'm pulling that, it is not pulling my stitch. And that is your perfect square knot for a perfectly flawless join. Okay, so that's the two of them. This one is around the post where you can see it's halfway down the stitch and it would actually in washing and use it will actually probably move down and I think that's let me just play around with that a bit so you can see so you see how that has now dropped below well this one won't drop below it's got nowhere to go it's sitting in those top loops and it won't move down so um, again see what the designer wants you to do it see how it's giving you a slightly wider square here than here because this one has gone down and flopped right down to the center of the stitch so i've got a bigger square here than i have here and it's just by the positioning of where those loops are going these are around the post these are in the top loops and that's all there is to it let me just bring that down for you okay well one more thing i want to show you which is how to do cheat them from the top if you forget or if you get too far along before you decide there is a way to cheat and get it done from the top back in a minute okay so one of the things that you find is in the patterns you will be told to make your surface slip stitches these pretty soon after you've made the main, the main stitches we usually don't wait too long because if you're working from behind you then have to bunch the work up to get down and the further down you have to go the harder it is so normally you'll find the slip stitch round will come within one to three row rounds later not very far along now these surface slip stitches have been made from the top it might be hard to see but the way you know that is because there is an extra loop see that extra loop there if you look at the surface slip stitches we just made, there is no extra loop. There is only the two top loops. There are only the two top loops there. If you work with slip stitches from the top, from the, then you've got three loops. You can see them right there. There's the two top loops. I know this is dark, but I will do it anyway. I'll show you. These two top loops, and there is also a third loop there because we're working from the top. So I'll show you how to do that. So as I said, that's... The, might sometimes be done. I have made a beautiful blanket which I might show you at the end where I worked it in one color mostly and when I finished it the center looked really bland so what I did was I did a whole bunch of surface surface slip stitching way down in the center of a five foot wide blanket and I did it from the top because there was no other way to hold it. So let's make some surface slip stitches way down here. So let's start. Here we go. I'm going to put my hook around the post. I'm going to use the posts. Just pull the loop through, get that tail out of the way, nice and long tail, leave it out of the way somewhere. Now I have to go back into that same spot and go down and up to the next stitch. Pull up my loop and pull it through. Don't worry about the looseness, we will fix that later. Now do you see how I've created an extra loop there? Right there there's an extra loop. See? Now that will disappear, you don't have to worry about it too much, but it 
this solve if this solves your problem to get your server slip stitches in then so be it so again back down into the same space and up to the next one pull up a loop and pull it through down and up pull the loop through pull it through nice and loose down and up pull it through and pull it through again and just keep going I'll just do a couple more down and up there. so that is how you do it from the top all of my loops are above whereas before my tail was at the back and my yarn was also at the back but here everything is on the top okay but it solves the problem now you will have that extra loop showing there but in the scheme of things you know who cares if that's how you solve your problem nobody cares so you just keep going around just the same way but you must be remembering to go into the start in the same space down and up pull your loop through and pull it through again always nice loose tension down and up I'm using the posts so reminding you here that I am going around the posts and now I've reached the corner now because I'm in the corner I have to do the same thing I've got to still make my loop pull it through pull it through again and then I have to turn and go down from the corner again and pull up my loop and I think I went into the stitches there I want to go around the post pull it through and pull it through again now, it does look a bit awkward but once you get your rhythm going and you're not trying to <laughs> record and film something it's a little bit different now look you see there is a bit of extra bulk there but does it really matter when it's lying flat no one's ever going to know so I'm just going to come around and I'll show you how to finish off and get rid of all of this stuff okay so we can finish nicely and have a nice surface slip stitch round that is done from the top back soon so I've finished I've gone all the way around and I have again stopped with one last stitch to make I've pulled cut my yarn and pulled it through nice long tail and I've still got my initial tail here now there's a two steps this time first we have to finish this final stitch so the thing we're going to do again like normal as if a needle join is go under those top loops come across and go under the top loops and then come back and stab down through the middle of that stitch might have to pull it a little bit tighter there make it the same size and stab down pull through and pull it out so I've taken my needle out I'll just leave that loop hanging at the back now what you're going to notice here is because we didn't continue we are missing that extra loop in this one spot see there it is there there it is there now you can ignore it or you can take the opportunity because we need this loop at the back as well so let's thread that one and what you can do is you can come up under here see how I'm on the other side of that stitch now if I had thought about it I would have pulled it to the top when I started instead of to the bottom but either way and then just thread it back down where this one comes out where this one finishes just go through there and pull it to the back and now every stitch has the extra top loop okay. there it is there's this one and there's that one so at least it's uniform okay now I've got to have to come back and do my little square knot again get the needle out. so square knot let me just make sure the tension is correct on my stitches do I need to adjust them you can pull it a little bit looser you can pull it a little bit tighter do whatever you need to do for both and then over whoops over and under <laughs> there it is over and under one way just snug not tight and then the other way over whoops over and under from the right to get my square knot and cinch boom and nothing looks any different on the other side so now, no matter which end I show you you are not going to know where the start is can you see so that's the difference between making the surface slip stitches from the top and making them from the bottom around the post and from the bottom into the top loops get a slightly 
bigger square going in the top loops than you do going around the post and then you can always add surface slip stitching after the fact from the top using the technique I just showed you so there you go that's all surface slip stitching I might just pop around and go and pick up my other blanket that I used the, the top surface slip stitching to add decorative features after I finished and I wasn't happy with it I'll be back in a minute Here's the blanket I was talking about. This is the Baby Artist by Vanessa Smith from Hooked on Sunshine. It's a beautiful blanket. It's got lots of lovely gorgeous texture and I was very happy with it. My only problem was my center was completely white and once I put it on the bed it looked like a giant bullseye so I wasn't too thrilled about that and I made the decision to add some accent highlights. I didn't have a lot of this pink left. In fact I had very little and I think I only had like about an inch of yarn left when I finished all of these little bits and pieces so I just sat down and decided to put a few little accent surface slip stitching around the place now let me zoom in and I will show you that this is in fact a surface slip stitch made from the top because here if you look really closely you can see that third loop let me find another one there we go this one looks better you can see it see the third loop right in the top there that's because I worked them from the top because there was no way I would have been able to scrunch up this much of the blanket to get underneath and that's why this sec third technique and from the top is highly useful it helped me to add extra texture it wasn't in the pattern but as I said my color choice left me a little bit unhappy going completely bland in the center and then all these beautiful color pops in the rest of the blanket like this so I decided to do something about it. I also did some additional surface post stitches to add something a bit of interest to the center and some surface slip stitching in the very 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 middle. Okay, So that's just a technique you can use but look my recommendation to you is this you buy a pattern or you pick it up because you love how it looks and the designer has spent countless hours designing it, testers, testing it, people proofreading them. If it says do a surface slip stitch why not do the surface slip stitch? But anyway, um, that's just my opinion. It's only an opinion. That's why it's called crochet my way. You can do it however you like. But you can see the value of surface slip stitches, how that can be done from the top. And, you know, you can see the value in the regular surface slip stitches. I'll just grab that other one and we'll just recap. There it is. This is the regular slip surface slip stitch done from the back with your yarn at the back. And you've got only the two top loops on the surface of your work as opposed to having three top loops on the surface of your work like this one okay. but when you lay something out flat on a big bed no one's ever going to see it which way you did it it doesn't matter you now have some extra tools in your sewing and crochet toolkit well I hope that was of use for you till next time bye for now